Mike McCool here. I'm in the Royal Examiner studio, and with me today is a couple of gentlemen from the Warren County Sheriff's Department. You see, I use that gentleman word. Did I you like, like that, that, Mike. I really like well, that. Well, Rank will have its privilege. We have Captain Jeff Holzbauer. How about that? That's it, sir. And Lieutenant Robbie Seal. So uh, joining with us. And Robbie, as well, as you know, has been instrumental in working in the community and community service. Uh, and yes. I know you've been working with seniors and, oh, and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. the young alike, the young at heart. Young at heart. And you've been doing and keeping really the community up to up to uh, up to date with all this coronavirus yeah. information and mm -hmm. all the emergency plans and things. So why don't you go ahead and fill us in on what's happening and and, and well, what you got on your calendar there. Certainly. And of course, I had a little outline what I was going to talk about. But yeah, with, with everything that's going on and, and everybody that's that's obviously taking the precautions that we we're all, you know, trying to practice out here with the COVID-19, uh, you know, my role as the community liaison with the sheriff's office is, is really related to the interaction with the public. Um, but unfortunately, from what I've done in the in the years I've been doing this, of course, just recently with the sheriff's office, uh, it's taken away from the actual contacting groups. Yeah, because you're kind of a hands-on kind oh, of guy. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> am I ever. And uh, But it, it actually opened the door up really uh, to a networking uh, side of it to where we have uh, initiated a couple uh, really good initiatives and in how we're networking with our, our subdivisions, our, our, you know, our community in general. And uh, one example of that... Of course, you have Facebook, sure, um, but uh, but there's another social media site uh, called Nextdoor. Right, I've seen and, you on there, and it's a real. We we tap, obviously we tapped into Nextdoor, joined Nextdoor, and of course uh, in networking. Now we're inviting all our citizens, uh, and there's a lot of citizens actually that are part of Nextdoor uh, in their various subdivisions which they live. So we're creating a great networking uh, program with Nextdoor and reaching out to our citizens. Uh, and, and one of the things what the, obviously I'm doing is that putting out the latest releases, updates from the uh, governor's office, uh, CDC with relation to the precautions and, uh, related to our uh, coronavirus. So it's a, it's a great, uh, tool that we're utilizing, um, and keeping in touch with our, our community. This is part of Sheriff Butler's community policing <laughs> oh, goodness, initiative. Yes. Is that right? It is. It is. I mean, his whole, his whole task, even back in his camp, you know, from his campaign was, was developing a better partnership with the community, and this is a you know perfect example of that. So, so it's taken off. I, I I'm telling you, since we got the uh, next door started, they, I mean, I my phone has lit up. I mean, literally, like lit up with uh, with people that have contacted me and uh, you know, in relation to that. So. Well, after you're on the Royal Examiner, it'll really light up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, come on now. Yeah. Well, 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 I did, did the last time I was here. That's so, right. Uh, so you got a lot of comments, and then based on the, the last interview I had with you, but but it will, it will. I mean, the people obviously tune into Royal Examiner, and uh, and it's another avenue. And and speaking of, I mean, Royal Examiner is something to talk about. Talking about another initiative of uh, what we do as an agency when it deals with crime. Uh, we're looking to start up uh, a crime of the week or month sure. um, and utilizing our press, <laughs> our radio station, to uh, to implement that program. Uh, to something years ago used to be called Crime Stoppers, right. way back in the day. And we'd like to reintroduce that, you know, and right. gaining the public's help, you know, with any crimes out there that we need information on. Right. I want people to know that we're at arm's length. We sanitized. Yes. And we washed our hands yes. and we took our temperature. So, we you did. know, we're, we're good here. I we had did. someone complaining when the sheriff was on. He said, you weren't six <laughs> feet apart. And I said, we had that Oprah filter on there that makes us look like we're Ours, close. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, yeah, we did. We sanitized really well when we uh, ended up here. So, uh, Took obviously in practicing the precautions. Well, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Jeff, uh, you are the captain of the patrol division. Is that correct? I am, and, and one and a lot of other things I know. But I think we all wear many hats at the sheriff's office. That's part of law enforcement is is being a part of, of what's going on. Yes, sir. So anything changed that you're doing different, or you're out there on what kind of things are you doing in the community police initiative? Well, we have we have broke the county up into sectors, and we have assigned police officers to those sectors uh, in in the areas where the police officer will get to know the area a lot better uh, instead of wandering around. And I don't want to say wandering, but we take a lot of calls where you may run from one end of the county to the other. Right. And sometimes it's it may be a while till you see somebody down your street or in your area, and by assigning people to a sector, it will 
ensure that in their off time or their slow time, they're in your neighborhoods. They're they're about what's going on in your in your area. And um, it seems like if if everything goes right, it, it should be a, a great benefit to the community. Well, you know, when you're in that when you're in the neighborhood on a regular basis, you know what's normal and what's not normal. What car belongs there? What doesn't? What what doors are normally open and what, what doors are closed? And exactly. What, what homes have what going on? Right. And you you know hey. when you put somebody new in there and they don't realize that hey this family member's got this issue or this family's got this issue or you know it, it's nice to have good solid people in the area so they know what's going on. Right. One of the uh, one of the um, problems that we had years and years past in the previous administration was the public always complained that the sheriff's department only responded. They would never, they weren't proactive in anything and that they would have to drive all the way across the county from the sheriff's office. And it'd be 45 minutes uh, or an hour before they got there. Is that, is, does this help that reduce that time? It will. And, and, and I'm pretty sure that you will see, and people have seen, uh, there is a lot more on the road time. And you will find that uh, things go a whole lot smoother when there is a problem if those people stay in those areas so that you don't have groups of law enforcement segregated away. And then when somebody does call, everybody's running through the town 70 mile an hour trying to get to a call out. Yeah. On- well, well, I know you have one officer. He's got a little territory on I-66 right there at exit six. is That's, that's his spot where he sets every day. <laughs> As a matter of fact, him, him, and I had a had a talk about that, and um, I'm I'm actually the one that put him there. I, I've had several people pass me, uh, and I was lucky to even catch a vehicle going by. Right. So that's my doings. Yeah, and, and you'll see more of that uh, out at Linden. That's another place that's just it's dangerous when when people are out and going and going to work and coming and. I wish there was a way we could convince everybody just to take a big breath and and realize uh, life is good. We yep. just have to look forward to the good parts we'll of it. Right. I, I read uh, uh, in this the uh, ticket the speeding tickets have gone up in New York City in the actual city because the streets are you know less cars and the and people are just shooting right through town and uh, the speeding ticket. You know, you want to think about getting a speeding ticket yeah. in, in New York in City. New York, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's going to happen front royal when the streets are low. People just zoom right on through. Well, and, and that was the other that's, thing that I, I wanted to make sure everybody knew. We are still taking calls. Business is open. We are here to protect the community. Uh, if you need something, we'll be there. We, yes. we will not... Uh, I'm hearing people saying, oh, you're not taking calls or you're not doing this, or you're not doing that. We may return some phone calls on things where we don't need to be in people's homes. Right. And it's for their protection as much as it is ours. We're, we end up being in 15 or 20 different homes in a day. And if we can speak to somebody over the phone and clarify, it's not saying we're not going to be coming to your neighborhood and, and looking at what happened, but we're trying to keep our distance to right. keep everybody healthy. And that's and that's in line with, you know, our plan, the sheriff's office plan, sure. how we conduct ourselves with the public and uh, and how the public obviously is, is looking for us as, you know, as their you know, public representatives to conduct ourselves and, and, and keeping, you know, the safety precautions in hand. So, it, you know, much like, you know, we have established a, uh, a desk officer up there in front of the, in, in the sheriff's office up that up front at the lobby area to to address the phone calls emails that come in as well as walk occasional walking sure sure so, a lot of it's about response time oh, even yeah. in an email it or is. a phone call if you can answer them back pretty quick <clears throat> uh i keep getting messages did you get my message did you get my it's funny they'll call you on the phone i just emailed you <laughs> yeah <laughs> right well, and, and our whole uh Emergency Communication Center is getting ready to go under under a big undertaking to be upgraded. And some of that stuff that you're talking about, those response times, because we are dealing with a bunch of younger people that sure. use technology. They're mm-hmm. not like you and right, I. Right, right. If you call me tomorrow, I'm okay, right? <laughs> we're, we're dialing, you know, dialing the old phone. <laughs> right. Uh, and they're, they want they want a response if, now. If you text yeah. someone, they they expect to text back within uh, 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. So Like you're just sitting there waiting for them. But, you know, part of that is when you mentioned the calling on the phone is kind of like the healthcare. It's like a triage. You're seeing you're going to send the right people to handle the right job mm-hmm. just because the patrolman might not be the right person to go to that. Right. That's exactly right. Absolutely so correct. maybe that's, that's really a, a good thing to do. Absolutely. I think is to, 
uh, again, it's communicating. It's yeah. letting people know that you're ready and you're out there. Well, and that's that's something that I want to make sure everybody is set at ease about. We are mm-hmm. here. We are being very proactive. We we are watching how things go. And for the people that are the salt of the earth of our community, we want you to know you're safe. Right. Uh, the other the other <clears throat> end of that is uh, I brought this up a few minutes ago. I called out to the jail and said. Uh, how many open places do we have? Well, we've got plenty of room. So for the folks that want to carry on, we are here yeah, they, able to clean Yeah, they're, it. they're still processing it's them, aren't still they? still business at hand. I mean, you know, a lot of people are didn't, you know, using COVID-19 you know, as a means of, well, you know, is law enforcement, you know, they backed off from what they're doing now. We haven't no. backed off. We're taking the precautions, but we're still in our, doing our job. And, yeah. and we still have room, just like you know, plenty Captain of room. Said, That's so. what I always, a friend of mine did. Uh, that always said, I said, you guys have quotas. He said, no, we can write all we want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he said, that. press hard, yeah. five copies. You know, that was his line. <laughs> you know, we talk about proactive. One of the things that, that we're also looking to do, and of course, more so now because, you know, people have time to, uh, you know, they're at home and they have time. Of course, you know, they're out about doing the essential duties that sure. they're, are tasked or you know, pretty much they have to do. But one of those, you know, a lot of them are going and dumping their trash or, and one of the uh, things that we're looking to do is, in, is enhance the monitoring enforcement process of a lot of the trash dumping issues here in the county. So we've got cameras uh, established at dumping site at the compactor sites, uh, looking to just monitor and make sure people. Uh, if it, and a lot of people don't realize this, and uh, working in a partner with Public Works, the county's Public Works Department, specifically their solid waste uh, division. Um, People, there's a lot of trash that that actually escape the uh, the trucks, if you will. Sure. People that are hauling it to the uh, Benville site, especially on 340, and and a lot of people don't realize. Uh, of course, loads have to be covered, and really, when it comes to trash loads, the Cal Public Works actually offers the the community free netting, free cargo nets. Um, you know, if they want to, as a means to cover their to cover their uh, uh, trash when they take well, it. Well, it's cheaper to, to cover it than it is to go try to well, pick it, it up later. Uh, yeah, and, and a lot cheaper if you get a ticket for not you know, securing your load. So. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, there's a reason for all that. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's a pain sometimes, but mm-hmm. it's safety, it's, uh, no, it's, it it's cost. Uh, you, know, we're our ta- you know, we're all paying taxes to, to keep our country clean, yeah. and, and nothing worse than, than lit- to me, one of the worst crimes is littering. I was pulled behind someone the other day, and they flicked a cigarette out the window. Oh uh, man! That, yeah, I always yeah. wish I had them blue lights yeah, on my car yeah. because I would have, <clears throat> I'd have yeah. flipped them on. <laughs> but you know, yeah, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, or I'm they saying, pull up to the light, open the door, and dump their ashtray yeah, on the I'm, side. I, oh man! I'm the same. Way, I'm yeah. just really. But so, on the flip side, Mike, I mean, you know, with the enforcement efforts that we're doing out there, we actually have, you know, you know, with everything that's going on and the stir craziness that craziness that is existing in people's lives right now we actually have a positive uh you know i guess concept that we're actually going to do this saturday it's easter you know, right. it's easter weekend and of course a lot of people are you know not going to be able to celebrate easter the way uh they normally do but uh sheriff butler and his, you know his administration uh, came up with the idea of uh we're gonna we're gonna be doing a caravan uh, with our, uh, our, I guess our fleet, uh, some of our, our vehicles, and we're going to have our Easter bunny. Some uh, with the Easter bunny costume. We like on. like Santa Claus. Absolutely, you do with them, yeah. we're going to ride into the, some of our neighborhoods in the in the county as well as the shopping centers, and you know make our presence known. And we're going to you know bring some cheer, bring some cheer to the neighborhoods. Let you know because we want our you know we want our citizens to know that we're thinking about them. We really do. Right. Yeah. So what's the plan coming in the fall for the Dare program? Because have you taken that over? Well, I actually took over the coordination of the actual Dare Day event. Okay, of course, okay. our school resource officers actually do the Dare program okay. within the schools. But of course, that's that's been canceled. It was set for April thirtieth, so it's been canceled altogether, and real you know, and rightly so. Of course, the schools have canceled. Sure. You know, well, I think the run. schools we're we're going to be a positive note. They'll start up on a regular time, so don't worry about that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's it's and and fortunately, it's the second year, second straight year that the the Dare actually Dare Day event has been canceled. So it's, it's very unfortunate, but obviously everybody's aware why. And uh, you know, we'll just pick up where we left. We have a lot of support out there from our from our community uh, organizations, businesses that obviously had donated to to make this dare program thrive and that the event happen and uh we're just we're just obviously we'll just keep kicking it down the road down until the, road. the day opens exactly. up uh, we're not we're still planning we're yeah. not gonna we're it's not just, gonna... it's just been temporarily suspended but we haven't you know our kids are very important to us and and what we try to you know with that program what we teach them 
and uh, and rightly so, we need to reward them for you know going through the program and graduating and, and having a fun day, if you will. Right, so, right, right. So yeah, that hasn't stopped. We'll 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 have it. We'll have it. You That's know. good. That's yeah, good. We still got a long summer ahead of us. Still. We do. We do. Uh, Jeff, are, are, tell us about some of the training you're you're doing there. I mean, uh, the the sheriff mentioned the the training, and I think that you were instrumental in some of that. We are doing a a lot of in house training at this point. Uh, and it's got to be in small groups because of the mandates that's been put on us. The, the downside is it's got to be in small groups. It's got to be in our place. The good side is we're able to do it. We have a lot of qualified uh, deputies that are there that, that can handle that right in our own place. And uh, it, it's good. It's a good thing that needs to happen. So on that end of it, uh, life is good for us there on that side. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we have acquired a lot of things uh, through grants that are going to allow us to do some extra training that wasn't there before. Uh, and that's all back to Mr. Butler and putting forth uh, his whole his whole vision of, of seeing the, sh- the sheriff's office move forward and try and sustain itself a little bit and not take and put that tax burden out on the on the public. Right, so right. That, well, that end of it's good. Well, I know the sheriff doesn't want to doesn't want us talking about uh, investigations, uh, but uh, we're going to talk about them anyway because they're not stopped. You are investigating things that the drugs and everything else that the sheriff has been working on for all these years. We're not going to go into the details, you know, right, but right. but uh, people thinking, well, the sheriff's just sitting back, not doing anything. And I know better. Things I, have happened. I, I want to tell you, for anybody that thinks that the sheriff is not doing anything. <laughs> I, I thought I was a hard worker for a long time. Uh, that man works some long hours. He's very dedicated. He's squared away. And the good thing for our public is he's about the safety and the welfare of right, people yeah, here. Right. Uh, and I, I think that's what a lot of people kind of lost there for a little while is that you know, we have a, a military man. We have a uh, retired law enforcement man with a level head and a good heart, he's salt of the earth. Right. So, and I, and I would say that if he was here or wasn't here. Right. Um, I, I, I tell you, he, he really is an asset to our community. So. Well, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's a famous wow. Zig and it, Ziglar quote, but it's so true. Anybody that wants to, to go look, I can assure you, you probably don't want to follow him around for a day or two. You're right. going to get tired. No. Well, I noticed when, no. when, the, when the campaign started, you had hair. and uh, <laughs> I've done yanked all that out and grained it up, sir. I, hey, I, you're I, not I, far behind. I hide, but I'm losing with these sunglasses. So, yeah. <laughs> You'll be wearing that bandana around your head like some of those. Yep, I um, have that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, I can assure you, if it was up to me, we would all go back to those hats to cover those heads. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This this younger crowd of law enforcement oh, really I know, tries right? to push back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, you've got a lot of young deputies, and, and I have talked to several of them, and they all seem to be squared away and enjoy. They don't seem to have any, I don't hear any, you know, back talk or, right. or anything no. negative. Everything seems positive. I, I think so. And I, I tell you, we, we do have a young crowd, but we've got a level-headed young crowd. Mm-hmm. And they know that if they run into something they're not sure about, they know that we're here. And they got, got someone backing them up and That's supporting right. them. So, well, yeah. and I and not to interrupt, but I, you know, what I see in interacting with you know, my fellow deputies is I see in their eyes and their faces, they're seeing a vision they like seeing. Uh, with Sheriff Butler, you know, there's at hope. The helm, at hope. the helm, and it's the morale issues. You know, every department goes through morale issues, sure, sure. ups and downs. But we're on a high right now, even with you know the the coronavirus, you know, that's you know affecting all of us, and you know with what how it's affecting our lives. Really, with the the job at hand and what we're doing, the morale issue is really, really high. Well, you know, I have really a poster high. that says the flogging will continue yes. until the morale improves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, but I know the sheriff doesn't browbeat people. You know, no, he, no, he really doesn't. He he He's takes a into consideration of what's going on around him, and and he takes in everybody's point of view of things and and moves forward with good, solid, sound decisions. I tell you one thing, I, I uh, and it's kind of like our president, you know, people get upset about things that he does or says, but sheriff's the same way. I campaigned on these things Mm -hmm. and I'm doing what I said I was going to do. And I think that's what really people expect. Yeah, exactly. And the the thing about it that impressed me, and I knew he was this type of individual. I I, I saw it from day one and, but he knows how to build a team. He is a team player and he's built, I mean, he's built a heck of a team. 
you know, from administrative level all the way down. And, well, and, and we see it. I see it every good, day. Good. I see it every day. Well, we want the public to be aware that, you know, the sheriff is out there working, our sheriff's department, our captains and lieutenants even, and all our patrol officers mm-hmm. and and uh, corporals and sergeants. Oh, yeah. We've got every every oh, rank in there, no way. <laughs> but, and the guy that sets out on, he's not going to tell me who it is, but the guy that sets out there on exit six on Interstate 66. <laughs> You know, <laughs> he is. I will tell you, he's a squared away individual, and I'm sure that if you receive, I went slow. Him, I went slow and see if he was playing solitaire on his phone, but I, I couldn't catch him. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to tell you, he's, he's a squared that, away guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. you can tell him that someone that notices him. Yeah, I, that's good. That's yeah, good. That's good. And, that's and good. I will tell you, he's staying in his sector there. Yeah, so that's his sector. He he's, stays he's right he's there, very close to where he needs to yeah. be. It always. He, you know, it kind of aggravates me. Not, nothing bad against the state police, but I'm, here's my philosophy on it. They're sitting on the bridge at the end of the shift trying to catch, you know, speeders or whatever right. it is because they don't want to go back on the road and end up on the other side of the, their territory. They've got to drive all the way home. So they come to where the easy pickings are and they know. And I'm thinking, well, that's that's revenue the county or the town could be getting. I said something that to the chief. He said, well, we're just sharing. That's yeah. what it, well, I, I think the answer is. There's a lot of smart guys in law enforcement. I, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I so there is some truth to that. <laughs> They're not going to say. <laughs> the, the answer to that is we we pay local taxes, but we also pay state taxes. Exactly. So yeah. it, it it's coming out of the same pocket. Every, well, ever how you look at yeah. it, it's a, it's a job that I, I, that's hard to do. Uh, you know, just patrolling and going up to somebody's car at night by yourself, and, and you know, there's well, there's that two percent of our population that just don't comply mm-hmm. and they don't care they don't. and and that's that's what makes it tough and, and the, the tough part for the sheriff's office is we've we've got to go to their homes we've got to go to their their outbuildings out out back out where nobody else is mm-hmm. and, and it's very dangerous so yeah. uh you, you the, the good thing is we we do have a lot of trained guys yeah. that are squared away that that do have a level head on them well, the, I, I see all the sheriffs are got a tough chest well, you you got to have one. You got to have one. It makes noise when you poke at it yeah. there. So I think there's something underneath that shirt. But uh, like you said, you just don't know nowadays. And, and there's, I think people watch too much television and see how, you know, easy everything is. And, they they make it look on television that it's all right now and it's all done right 60 away. minutes of world's problems of, are, are over. I, I wish things in life were that way, but that's mm. not the way God made it. That's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. We got to deal with what we have. Well, right. amen to that. Anything else you want to talk about? We've kind of covered the A to Z. Yeah, but yeah. Actually, we'll let everybody know with our event coming up Saturday on right. our Facebook page. You know what neighborhoods we're going to be at. We don't expect people to run into us or anything like that. We don't want to grab. You know, we're not there to stand in your yard and yeah, stand in and, your and, yard and, and, and wave. wave. And we'll have the Easter Bunny there, and you know, and I hope the kids will be out. And you're not going to throw eggs. No, we're not going to throw any <laughs> eggs. Not, nothing like that at all. So uh, just, just well, uh, hopefully bring smiles to people's you faces. You know, it's like the, it's like our Christmas uh, Eve trip on the fire truck you know people really look forward to that my even my 40 year old kids oh, yeah. uh look forward to that and, mm-hmm. and taking their kids out for things yeah. like that it's it's yeah. just it's kind of like yeah. in a um you know just an event that people really well, ex, you know like and it doesn't stop with easter i mean with, with you know however uh, you know long this goes uh every holiday that comes up sheriff's department is going to be coming up with another uh, another creative idea to, to to take to the neighborhoods and uh, on yeah, airwaves, yeah. if you will, to, to let, let our community know we're really thinking Well, you know, uh, we're, we're getting together here every couple of weeks, yeah. and, and uh, Robbie will be coming on the town talk, and we'll be talking about things that have happened in the last couple of weeks and bringing us up to date on events and uh, just the activities of the community and the yes. sheriff's department and, and things we can do to make everybody better, safer. Uh, we can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, can't I know. Wait. Maybe by then I'll have some real hard <laughs> questions for you. <laughs> Uh, to do, you write in, send me your question, and on the next yeah. time, I'll I'll ask them the and question. Then, and so, then Mike will send them to me to, to, to actually so that you can yeah, actually, actually so I have the right answer. When we yeah, get we on won't there. catch you. Up. <laughs> right, we'll do that. Well, again, uh, appreciate it, Jeff and Robbie, yeah. that you stopped in and uh, keep up the good work well, and thank, thank you. you for your service. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks thank for having you. us, Mike. Cheers. All right.